You're about to meet one of the stars of the television series, Petticoat Junction. His real name is Mr. Higgins. His stage name is simply The Dog. And his trainer is one of these three young ladies. What is your name, please? My name is Gary Warshower. My name is Gary Warshower. My name is Gary Warshower. Only one of these young ladies is the real Gary Warshower. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, and Kitty Carlisle. On To Tell the Truth, To Tell the Truth is brought to you this evening by Anison, the headache tablet to relieve pain, so relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. And now, here's your host, Bud Collier. Thank you, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good evening, Colin. Good evening. Good dog, huh? A lot of fun with that one. Open up your envelope, if you will, please, and follow along as I read this first story. I, Gary Warshower, am an animal trainer. I work exclusively in motion pictures and television. In addition to dogs, cats, and chimpanzees, I have also trained such unlikely animals as possums, foxes, and turkeys. For the past two years, I have been teaching one particular dog such stunts as yawning, sneezing, typing, and playing checkers. The dog is of dubious parentage and came from the local pound. His name is Higgins, but he is referred to simply as the dog when he performs on CBS television's Petticoat Junction. Signed, Gary Warshaw. <laughs> Panel, these three young ladies, as you heard, all claim to be the same one. Gary Warshower by name. Let's start the questioning with uh, Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Miss Warshower, number two, it says that Higgins is of dubious parentage. But what do you think he is, like a spaniel or, I mean... We think he's half cocker and half poodle. Oh, a cockapoo. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could you tell me, number three, who trains the marquee chimps? I don't know. You don't... Uh, well, number one, do you know? No, I don't. Thank you. Listen, number two, what did you teach a turkey to do? And you said you trained a turkey. We really don't train them. We bait them into doing things that we want them to do. You bait them? Yes. Bait. 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 Oh, not bait. Bake. I thought they baked them. B-A-I-T, <laughs> not B-A-K-E. -E. Well, I see. Okay. <laughs> number three. Oh. You roast them. <laughs> Just give you a horse and beef. Number three, do you know about such old-time uh, animal acts as uh, uh, Gautier's dogs and monkeys and Powers elephants and Lafarge's cockatoos? Never heard of those? No, those were in the grand tradition of that. I thought it was going to... All right, number one, uh, what, what is that dog that looks like a cocker spaniel and married a uh, dachshund there? It's kind of a, like a hairy wiener. What, what, you know a long-haired dachshund. Is that a long-haired dachshund? I think that's the one you mean. Oh, mercy. All right, number two, the dog that you taught to play checkers, does he ever win? No. He's a dummy. Right? <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> cheat either, right? No. Well, how, do, how, how do you teach a dog to play checkers? We don't teach him how to play checkers. What do you do? Well, we teach him how to pull back the checker on the checkerboard. Oh, I see. And then we reverse the film, and in I real see. life, it looks like he's playing. All right. Kitty. Uh, number one, do, do you know what uh, the chimpanzees were that were on the show that uh, one of our panelists was on called the Hathaways? I believe they were the marquee chimps. Oh, thank you. Uh, number two, when you teach a possum how to do something, possums sleep all the time. How do you teach him to stay awake? Uh, we don't teach him how to stay awake either. We bait him as well. <laughs> uh, number three, what does baiting a turkey or a possum mean? Uh, that's teasing them with food. What kind of food do you tease a turkey with? Well, grapes. <laughs> grapes? Mm -hmm. And what do you Seedless. make him do with the grapes? Uh, well, uh, if we want to make him go someplace, we put the grapes over there. I see. <laughs> number one, what kind of a breed was after? Tom Poston. <laughs> wow, wow. Yeah. new kind of breed. Uh, number three, are you familiar with the, the chain technique in, in training a dog? The chain collar? Uh, no, it's just a length of chain. Uh, throw chain, you mean? Uh-huh. Yes. What's it for, that chain throwing business? That's to make them come back to you. 
If they run away, then you scare them with it. Oh, I see. Uh, number three, you, Kitty didn't ask you, but uh, when you train a possum, are possums smart enough to train in that sense? No, you just get them to where you can handle them. How and do you they mean? don't bite. Oh, I see. Yes, I see. Uh -huh. Number one, uh, do you use hand signals or do you use voice signals or whistle signals or what kind of signals? Well, do you use? off camera, we use hand signals. Now, what would a hand... That's it. Time for you now to make your own hand signals on your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once without change and without any consultation whatsoever. Just vote now for the one you think is the real one. Make it for number one or for number two or for number three. A team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Very well, Tom. For whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Uh... She wasn't afraid to say that she didn't know something when she didn't know it, you know? And the real one sometimes has less fear about that than one of the liars. If they don't know, they get panicky, so she... <laughs> Peggy Cat. Number three reminds me of Mia Farrow. I voted for number two because I felt that... You should know the name of Gene, Gene Detroit, but he trains the Mikey Chimps because I think he's the biggest chimp trainer in the business. Orson Bean. That's one of the best stories I ever heard. <laughs> I, uh... I voted for number three because uh, she's very steady of eye and you must never show animals you're afraid of them and she doesn't look like she's afraid of me, so I voted for <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number three, too. Uh, I don't think she needs a chain to have anything come back to her, but I think she's the real one. Yeah, well, there we have it with the votes all in and the minds made up. Let's find out now which one of these three young ladies, in truth, is Gary Warshower. Will the real Gary Warshower please Stand up. Persuade Iggins to do some tricks for us. Thank you very much. Higgins, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Number one, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Joy Durden, and I own and operate my own dress shop here in New York. And number two, what is your real name and what do my you do? My name is Kathy Hallahan, and I work at a restaurant called Chuck's Composite. We find that there was enough instinct with the panel to know a dog fancy when they see one, and they got three right. But there was one wrong, nonetheless, and that's worth $250 to you. And we thank you very much for gracing our show and making it that much prettier. Good night, and God bless you. Let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Helen Beardsley. My name is Helen Beardsley. My name is Helen Beardsley. Follow along again, panel, with that next envelope. I, Helen Beardsley, have been married to my husband, Frank, for four years. We have 20 children. Perhaps I'd better explain. When I first met Frank, I was a widow with eight children. He, a widower, with 10. We fell in love, got married, and have since had two children of our own. Despite the precision planning of a mess sergeant, the problems of managing a household of 22 present certain singular problems. For instance, on an ordinary Saturday shopping trip, our purchases include 60 pounds of oatmeal, 50 loaves of bread, 14 heads of lettuce, and 54 pounds of hamburger. 
We bathe the younger children four at a time, do all the laundry in shifts with one machine, and use no outside help whatsoever. I have just written a book about my wonderful family. The title comes from a question my son Philip asked when the Beardsleys sat down to their first joint Christmas dinner. He asked, who gets the drumstick? <laughs> Signed, Helen Beardsley. <laughs> ladies all claim to be Helen Beardsley. It seems appropriate to start our questioning with our recent bridegroom, Orson B. Orson, <laughs> Thank you. and congratulations to you. Thank you, but uh, gee, whoever you are, if you ever have a fight with your husband, it's not so bad you can get lost in the crowd, right? <laughs> <laughs> Number three, uh, how, how do you carry home 50 loaves of bread and 14 heads of lettuce and 54 pounds of hamburger? I mean, do, you, do the kids go along with you to the supermarket? No, we have most of them delivered. Oh, do you? Yes. So they don't say, here they come again, close the doors, right? <laughs> number, number four, uh, number four. <laughs> I'm getting carried away here. <laughs> it's a large family. Yeah. <laughs> number one, dear, how many rings around the tub do you have on the end of a six? <laughs> Saturday night, it must be a little black, right? I hope none. <laughs> Oh, uh, Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number two, this is terribly personal, but with all this expense and all, what does your husband do? He's in the Navy. He's uh -huh. not home. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's home, he's home. <laughs> Change your line of question, please. <laughs> uh, you, you say, you number one, you bathe four kids at once. What kind of a bathtub do you have? <laughs> Only the small children at once. All of them at once. Uh, number three, what kind of a house do you live in? We live in a ranch-style house with 19 rooms. And do they all, do the kids in number two, how, how many sleep in a room? Uh, three sleep in some rooms and two sleep in some, depending on their ages. Uh, number one, your kids have a lot of humor because for one to ask who's, who gets the drumstick, does that help raise all these children? Oh, it certainly does. You have to have a sense of humor. <laughs> Tom Poston. Thank you, but Number one, uh, I'll ask you personally, because I have to start with somebody. Uh, you're quite a lovely looking woman, and to take care of 22, a house full of 22 humans, uh, tell me, do you find it necessary to use uh, an assortment of beauty aids and uh, lotions and balms and unguents and so forth? Oh, no. Don't name any names, but do you use all that stuff all the time? Wouldn't have time. <laughs> What about you, number two? Do you find that hand lotion is a must and, uh... Well, I'm, I'm sure it is for some women, but not for me. My golly, isn't that amazing? Number three, you have no help whatsoever. D no. Does your husband pitch in once in a while? Oh, yes. And is he off, uh, often enough to do that for you? Is he? Yes, his hours are uh, until 4.30 every day. Peggy Cash. Thank you. Number two, uh, does the Navy give you an allowance for each extra child? Oh, yes. Ah, well, I'm ah, so ah, glad ah, to hear ah, that because, <laughs> you know, well, and they get, number three, do they get their teeth and their medical stuff all free? Yes. Uh, no, not the dentist. Not the dentist. The Make medical. Make the dentist, yes. too, Mr. Just, President Johnson. Uh, they need it. That's, well, anyway, so glad at least they have the doctor. <laughs> now, number one, that makes me feel for your son, Philip, about the drumstick. Now, do you make more than one turkey? Uh, we bake more than one turkey. We don't always eat more than one, however. Number three, I have a friend who has ten children, and she has a milk machine in her kitchen. Do you have one? <laughs> no, we do not. I advise you to get one them. <laughs> That's it. Time again to vote. So mark your ballots, if you will, panel, at once, without change, without consultation. Just vote now in this wonderful story about a happy large family. <laughs> vote for number one, number two, or number three. Three and... Oh, Mark? Tom, for whom this time? I think I would have been happy to, to, to be in that a household with any of those ladies, but I voted for number one. She seemed to have a, a calmness that would be required for that, unless she doesn't like her job. <laughs> Peggy Cat. I voted for number three. Uh, but well, she's always smiling, and gee, you'd have to have a great deal of good nature for that. And another thing, she knew that the Navy didn't supply dentists. If you had 22 kids, you'd watch out for the things like the dentist and the bills. Orson? You're all three perfectly charming, and it's a wonderful story. I voted for number three because she said her old man gets home at 4.30, and I think that's something that the real one would know. <laughs> because she'd be hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. 
Well, I voted for number one. I figured that number three's husband didn't leave the house till 4.30. <laughs> <laughs> so he was able to help out until then. I voted for number one because it seems to me that she had the most humor, which is really what you would need. <laughs> and when the story was being told, she was smiling on the platform. Very well, it's evenly divided, as you see, with the votes all in and the minds made up. Let's find out now which one of these three ladies, in truth, is Helen Beardsley. Will the real Helen Beardsley please stand up? Thank you, Helen, very much. Thank you. I'd like to show you the announcement of the wedding of Helen and Frank Beardsley. You'll see it on your monitors and on your sets. And it reads as follows. Michael, Charles, Gregory, Rosemary, Louise, Mary, Susan, Veronica, Germaine, and Joan Beardsley, and Colleen, Jeanette, Nicholas, Thomas, Jean, Philip, Gerald, and Teresa North, request the honor of your presence at the marriage of their parents, Helen Brandmere North to Francis Louis Beardsley, Saturday, the 9th of September, 1961. And I'm sure you... I'm sure you'd like to see a family portrait, wouldn't you? Take a look. There's the family. Isn't that a beautiful group? I'm sure I don't have to tell you that you are a very rich family. Thank you. We certainly are. You sure are. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Mrs. Virginia Knapp, and I'm a medical technician here in New York. Number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Rhett Kelly, and I'm a high school librarian at Syosset, Long Island. Oh, wow. And you kept the story fine. You did a little better than the first round because there were two incorrect votes that you duped them into uh, voting, and therefore that's twice $250 for a total of $500 to divide. And thank you so much for being with us. We enjoyed it and hope you did. Goodbye and God bless you. Our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My, my name is William Waff. My name is William Waff. My name is William Waff. Follow along again, if you will, please, panel. I, William Waff, am commanding officer of the United States Coast Guard cutter Cape Darby. Along with six other cutters operating in the Straits of Florida, it is our responsibility to maintain a daily patrol in order to perform our prescribed duty of saving lives and property at sea. Since 1961, the United States government has added to the Coast Guard's traditional job of search and rescue the tricky business of picking up refugees from Cuba, who in all manner of small craft have managed to reach our patrol area. If current negotiations with Fidel Castro reach a successful outcome, the Cuban refugee problem will have been solved. In the meantime, however, the Coast Guard's Cuban patrol continues to operate. So far, we have been able to bring to the United States and freedom more than 8,000 escapees from communist Cuba. Signed, William Waugh. <laughs> These three gentlemen all claim to be William Waugh. We'll start with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, bud. What marvelous work you're doing. Number three, how many fellows are with you on the, on the uh, uh, Cape Derby? Thirteen. Number two, what manner of craft have you picked up these refugees on? Almost everything from uh, inner tubes through small sailboats. Oh, my Lord. Uh, number one, how many children have you rescued? I believe we've rescued probably somewhere around 15 or 20 in the last few months. Uh, number two, how far from Cuba do these people generally uh, contact you, or do you contact them? Well, they, con they, are, they are sighted usually by an airplane. How far off the Cuban coast? Mm, average of halfway, 45 miles. Uh, number three, when you greet them, what do they generally say? They speak Spanish, and I can't understand them. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Poston. Thank you, bud. Number one, do you speak enough Spanish to understand them? No, I don't. I'm not going to ask you anything in Spanish, but I, I will ask you, number one, if I may, who, who coaches your football team up there at the, uh, at the Coast Guard Academy? Otto Graham. Great man. He was on our show mm. once. Uh, number three, how far is Cuba from the uh, mainland of the United States? From uh, Key West, the southernmost most island, it is 90 miles. 
And uh, when you spot these people, have you ever been in a spotter or are you on the water? I'm, on, I'm in the cutter. The airplanes usually spot them. How many kids have you picked up? Um, it's hard to say. Usually, um, on a, according to the size vessel, usually I guess there's four or five on each, on each vessel containing 18 people. Peggy Cat. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, number two, how many patrol boats have the Cubans got you supposed to keep these people from getting out of their coastal waters to ours? I don't know exactly. Thank you. Uh, number three, uh, could you estimate how many Cubans that try to make it, make it? Like, I mean, one out of three, one out of five? I, I would say uh, one out of two make, do make it. Thank you. Number one, how much money is the United States trying to raise to help get those, if, if Castro keeps his promise, to get those people out of Cuba? Um, I'm not aware of uh, how much we're doing or Thank how much money's involved. Thank you. Number three, how close to the mainland of Cuba can you get? I mean, are you allowed to go by, you know, whatever they call it, naval law? Uh, three miles off the coast is international waters, but uh, we very seldom go closer than 40 miles. That's the closest pickup that I've made. Thank you. Arson Bean. Number two, is there a Coast Guard station on Fire Island? <laughs> yes, sir, there is. Good, that's good duty, right? Be sent over there. Number three, did some guy really <laughs> paddle uh, 45 miles in an inner tube? Uh, I don't recall that. Well, who said number two? Did you say about the yes, inner tube? Yes, I did. Did, so, did you really pick up somebody far out at sea in an inner tube? He had two boards over the inner tube. Oh, my goodness. Number one, what's the weirdest craft you ever saw anybody on? Probably, uh, probably the weirdest craft I've seen is uh, seeing about a 13-foot uh, rowboat with about 15 to 20 people in it. My goodness. That's it. Time you now to ship your oars and mark your ballots. So mark them at once. No consultation, no changing once you've marked. Just <laughs> mark. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. Mm. All done but one, and oh. there. You've the changed it. You've changed it. It'll have to go as an, a, a wrong vote, because you wrote one down and changed it to another. Yeah, you couldn't see that. I could see it, well, you're not to allowed to do it. OK. <laughs> he, used to, he used to play Superman. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Poston, how did you mark your ballot? I marked it with number one there, bud. Uh, I, I take it from some of his answers that there is more than one crew and more than one cutter. And when he gave his answers, very often he based it on what he personally had seen. So I thought it might be number one. Peggy Cat. I voted for number two because I read about this Cuban situation and I did hear that people tried to escape in rafts made of patched together inner tubes. Orson. That's all right. I believe you. <laughs> Can't prove it by me. I voted for number one. It's a military secret. Why? I... <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Well, I voted for number two, but the warden over here saw me write number three originally, so I had to put back number three. I voted for number three. <laughs> no reason. That's it. You don't have to stay after class. Honesty is so that's the best part. <laughs> the votes are all in, and mine's made up in a way. And now let's find out which of these three gentlemen, in truth, is William Waff. Will the real William Waff please stand up? Here he goes. Who's it going to be? One. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? Bob Moore with Time, the weekly news magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Bill Mathis and I'm a halfback for the New York Jets. <laughs> Checking the score, we find that there were two incorrect votes, and those are the most interesting ones. That's a 50% score against this panel, and that's good. That's twice $250, total $500. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Good night, and God bless you. Fortunately, that's all we have time for tonight. You make it go fast. Thank you for that, and I'll see you next week. See you next week at the same time. Don't forget, also, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. But in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Woodson, Bill Sotman production. This is Clint Eastwood. 
Rain, floods, sandstorms, dust, mud, that's the climate on rawhide. Doesn't make for much comfort, but every turn of the trail means more hazards. Tomorrow night at 7.30 sharp, 6.30 central time on the CBS. The news has been brought to you by Sleepy, the non-narcotic sleeping tablet. Sleepy's for a good night's sleep. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program was pre-recorded.